Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Prince and Perez, a.k.a. Papi Chulo, and I use my voice as a singer and actor to bring my truth to you. This is my episode of Lip Roll with Valerie Morehouse. Welcome to Lip Roll. My name is Valerie Morehouse. I have a unique privilege to work with some of today's most influential and iconic voices as a celebrity vocal coach. This is a show where my guests and I are able to peel back the curtain and kind of bring you backstage and paint a picture of what it's like to be an artist, an actor, a broadcaster, and beyond while still confronting all the challenges of mental health, physical health, and spiritual health. Welcome to Lip Roll. Welcome to Lip Roll. Yes. I'm your host, Valerie Morehouse. And I'm your co-host, Ella London. Hi, Ella. Hey. So what's going on today? We are less than 30 <laughs> subscribers away from 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's amazing. It is. I so love we want numbers. everyone to hit that subscribe button and get us over that mark. That'd please be awesome. hit the subscribe button, please. please. Um, and today <clears throat> we have a guest who has almost a million followers on Instagram. He was one of the most successful, he was in one of the most successful urban touring boy bands. He toured with Justin Bieber and Janet Jackson. Amazing. And just had his solo debut at number five on the iTunes R&B soul charts. He is... <gasps> Princeton Perez, Dang, thank you for joining us. <laughs> you guys just reminded me all that stuff that You're I did. You're like, I did that and I did that and I did that. Wow, I'm really yeah. awesome. Princeton, welcome. <laughs> thank you. I'm excited Great. to be here. It's really good to have you and we'd love to take a listen right now to your single Perfect World um, yes. from your EP, Papi Chulo Prelude. Two sides, every story got two sides Living out of two cribs, separate the wife from the mistress I've been living two lives, shit be getting too far If I gotta lose something, I would rather lose my mind And it's true, tell me who will walk away when it's too good Girl, if I had to decide, couldn't pick one if I tried Baby, I'm selfish Got nothing to do with my pride, yeah Treating my side like my main Lately it's feeling the same But I can't help it, yeah Can't help it You had me caught in the middle of these two girls It ain't fair but in a perfect world Loving on ya Loving on ya A perfect world. Separate the real from the fake. Yeah, yeah. Time to see who is and who ain't. Yeah, yeah. You know what it was from the gate. When I pull up with a thing, don't be surprised in the face. Uh uh. You know you got issues with your jealousy. Just like I got issues with monogamy. Uh uh. So don't make this hard for me, no. Girl, if I had it to decide, couldn't pick one if I tried. Baby, I'm selfish. Got nothing to do with my pride, yeah Treating my side like my main Lately it's feeling the same But I can't help it Can't help it You had me caught in the middle of these two girls It ain't fair but in a perfect world Loving on ya Loving on ya Yeah. 
Yes, because you've said that this is your favorite sing single from your EP. Yeah, and I can favorite. totally see why. I mean, the soul is just. Thank you. Point. Tell us about recording this record. You know, it was, I had just finished a session with uh, Dirk and January, the ones who like, you know, did my whole EP. And I got home and I was just like, you know what? I called him. I was like, I don't think we have the first single. Like, I want an R&B record. You know, one of my biggest idols is Usher. And I felt like mm -hmm. Usher, and on every single one of his albums, he had like that one R&B classic. You know, like Confessions and just, mm -hmm. just different. And I called Dirk and he was like, well, I have this one beat that i've had for a couple years and he sent it to me and i was like where have you we've been work recording for a whole year and <laughs> you're just now so then we went back i went in the next day and i recorded it and fixed it up and i sent it to my label and they were like this is this is a single amazing wow. yeah. i love that i love that and um i also see here on the youtube video that you have a dance competition going on yeah the perfect world dance challenge yeah so valerie i think you and i should Enter. What do you think? Uh, I no. think you should enter. I mean, it's really that would anything. Be very like, scary. It could be singing. It could be dancing. <laughs> what's What's one of the moves from your video? Again? I could do, I could do it from the hips down. <laughs> I just can't get the shoulders and the hips at the same time. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice move. Like I kind of forgot the choreography, so I was looking at it like. Like, I need to remember that for tour. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Like no, it's really, really great. Um, and speaking of dancing, um, I think it was when you were about 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, you were in the, you were the first member actually of yeah. the ba ba band Mindless Behavior. Yes. Um, how did that come about? Um, I went to an audition and my mom knew what I was going because, you know, growing up in LA, I wanted to be a dancer. So I went on so many auditions, like just trying to, I was like five years old, like I need to book a job. I need to book a job, like oh. ready to go for it. And this was just like another audition for me. Um, and there was like a thousand boys that were going and then we had to sing and dance. No, and no, no pressure. Oh, it was, pre and I hate auditions. <laughs> auditions. Like, Every, who likes auditioning? I don't, like I don't know. Does you anybody have to put yourself like out there. Like, I know, I mean, I, I know some dancers that like that feeling and I'm just like, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that at all. So I went and I sang and danced and that night they were like, you're the first member to in the group Miles Favorite and I had no idea I, I was just really ready to get homeschooled I was like if I can be homeschooled travel the, travel the world I'll be cool and, that's yeah. awesome I love that I love that auditioning is always very stressful yeah. isn't it, it's it is. very, I, I can't even yeah. imagine it's like you're looking in your own soul the depths that's, of your soul you're terrible yeah, you're amazing you put you're terrible out there, and then you go and there were like other boys that were singing better than me dancing better so yeah, I was just getting in my head yeah that's well we all right. do that as yeah. artists we all get in our head you know exactly. that's just that's what artists do yeah but exactly. it's all cool so so what was it like touring with Janet Jackson and Justin Bieber that was fun Tell Janet was that. one of the most nicest artists we've ever toured with because you know her audience is older so yeah. no one knew who we were yeah we had like five songs but uh I remember the last show we had in Washington DC at the Constitutional Hall she watched because we toured with her for a couple months but you know she's Janet Jackson she's, she's doing her own stage, thing yeah. and we got to meet her that night and she bought us all um like the new iPads that just came out she bought us all like unlimited iPad um, iPods with like music and everything like and she watched our show from the side and we had like a little Michael Jackson like intro tribute thing like it, she Aww, was just one of the nicest that's so nice no every time I see her I've seen her like twice after and I'm just like I broke my iPad iPod oh, that night no. oh, the day no. she gave it to me but it's all good I still have it did you ask her for another one no <laughs> This I is the sacred <laughs> iPad right here. I know, but it's, it's all good. That's oh, so that's hilarious. Great. And then Justin Bieber, of course. He was doing arenas. Like, we were yeah. a group that no one knew who we were, and our first tour was like freaking Madison Square Garden. Like, it was the craziest That's crazy. That's thing. like being thrown into the fire. It was crazy. It was just one of the best experiences, and we told him for a couple of weeks, and <laughs> he was not, he was young, too. He was our age, so it, it felt a little mm -hmm. more, like, family-oriented. He mm -hmm. would always be on, like, segways, and we would be on segways with him. It was just fun. And Sean yeah. Kingston was on it. It was a fun tour. That's fun. awesome. Yeah. Um, because, and so you obviously, you know, like you said, you were homeschooled and yeah. you spent pretty much your entire um, high school life yeah. on tour and going around and doing everything. Um, you took some time after Mindless Behavior, though, yeah. between that and <clears throat> what you're doing right now. How, why was it important for you to take that time and not just launch straight into the next thing? I mean, I, I joined Mindless when I was 11, so and the group ended around when I was 20, so all of my teen years was on tour, mm -hmm. like touring. I didn't go to school. I, I didn't, like, just really live, like, a normal life so I just felt like you know how people have their gap year from high school to college I was like just let me have my gap year and let me kind of live life alone and within the first couple months I like got my license I got a car I got I went to uh three proms Whoa, I wow. loved that nice. I was like this is what high school <laughs> is I love this but that's my audience I got to like go to my friend's uh college campus and see how like people were like it was just fun I went to my first football game 
It was just, but I'm like 20 years old. Like, but that's really out. important that you did that. Yeah. Really important because those are your memories, yeah. you know, and you want to be able to kind of have that balance and do it all. And a lot of artists miss out on that. Right. So. They just go for it. And I was like, you know what? If I really want to make real music from like real experiences, I want to just live real life. Yeah. It was fun though. Really yeah. Good. Well, what was it like finding your voice as a solo artist? Because you're primarily a dancer, you said. Yeah. So how did that come to fruition? And even for you? in the group, I wasn't the lead singer. So usually um, the lead singer is the one that branches off and does something. But not always. Not There's always. There's the dark horse. <laughs> in this one, in this case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I left. I think. I, I think the most. I, I think the thing that mm-hmm. took the longest was just trying to find like what type of music do I want to make? Because yeah. I love so much music. That's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah. For artists? yeah. And I was like, I need to make like an album that's like synced has a concept like I really wanted to focus and I love rock jazz pop content. I love so much music that I was like I can't put an album out with all different genres but <laughs> R&B was just calling me and I just worked I worked with my vocal coach Tim Carter mm-hmm. and he got me right I would go every day like 8 in the morning and I would just do vocal lessons every day and every day and just never stop Good and, and I just record I, I think ne- recording music and hearing me back helped Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a long process. That's amazing. I love that you're willing to work because so many artists aren't. We talk about mm-hmm. that a lot on yeah. the role because we have a lot of my artists on that we get yeah. to work out mm-hmm. what their journey was. So yeah. it's great that you have that commitment. It's Absolutely. yeah. It's like artist development. Exactly. You need that. Exactly. Yeah. It's so love cool. It. And now you have your solo debut yeah. EP out. Yes. How does that feel? It feels amazing. You know what? It's just this week it's starting to hit me because the week that it came out, mm-hmm. I was in New York doing press and uh-huh. I just told my manager, I was like, you know what? We're in New York. Let's just drop an address in Times Square and all the fans come out like Thursday night when it hits midnight, right? Mm-hmm. Times Square calls and like, you know, you may get shut down. Like, it's a tourist area. There's a lot of people. So then Planet Hollywood was like, you know what? We'll take over it. I thought maybe like a couple hundred fans were going to show up because it's my first ever solo meet and greet. Right. And over 3,000 fans showed up. <gasps> Isn't that amazing? It was the crazy. When I pulled up, I, when I was getting ready at my hotel, I, fans were tweeting me like, we're waiting, we're waiting. Show me pictures. And I was like, okay, this is a little too much. And when then you, I got when there. When you put the time crazy. in, you know, mm-hmm. it's got to be a slow burn. Yes. With one of my artists, we just did that. And really? now she's reaping the reward. She didn't think she could headline her own tour. And she she's sold out these massive venues three nights, like in two minutes. And she wow. was like, whoa. Sometimes you don't realize what your fan base is. Oh, I did. I kind of forgot a little bit. But yeah. that main greet, and, you know, every fan that I meet, like, I talk to them, I hug mm-hmm. them, like, like let's talk so the main was like five hours yeah. so then when it hit midnight and the ep came out i'm thinking you know it's an ep like a mixtape like it's not gonna chart on albums and then like <laughs> I said that night it was like charted <laughs> yeah. at number five on albums and i was like it's not even an album it's an ep like what's yeah. going on it was yeah, just yeah. so much going on that now this week i'm like looking at the footage like wow this is kind of crazy it is crazy it's an overnight sen- you know it feels like an overnight sensation yes. um so i kind of want to know what your inspiration behind your ep poppy chulo yeah well that was a nickname that a fan gave me oh okay. i was on tour and uh i would like give fans like you know me and my fans are really close like we joke around and give nicknames to each other and mm-hmm. uh she was just like oh i'm gonna call you poppy chulo and i'm mexican so in the mexican culture that's like you become a man you're like macho like and i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with that so then when i when the EP came, everyone was like, the last thing was like, what are we going to name it? What are we going to name it? And I was like, we should just call it the Papa Chulo Prelude. I felt like when I was recording these songs, Princeton kind of took a backseat and like Papa Chulo arrived. Mm. To it's like your alter ego. My alter ego. Because there was just songs that I listen to now. And I'm like, how did I hit that note? How, how was I able to? And it was like, that was Papa Chulo. Like, yeah. he, he did everything. So that's it's Papa Chulo Prelude. And the prelude is just like the beginning. It's, it's, it's not the album yet, but it's just a little sneak peek of what's going to come. So you do have that alter ego. Yeah, because you have to. So some artists actually do. That's a that's a that's a I thing. That. I needed that. It's like to Beyonce, like Sasha else. Fierce, right? Yeah, you got to channel so something and, else. Yeah, because mm-hmm. half of it is mental and emotional. So if yeah. you have something that you can you can rest on, sometimes that works. Yeah, literally, and even like now when I'm in rehearsal and I'm like not going full out, my man just like, "Where's Papi Chula? Where's Papi Chula? Prison <laughs> needs to leave. Prison <laughs> needs to go." And I'm like, "Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're like, channeling, I'm trying, channeling, I'm trying to channeling." Channel yeah, <laughs> I love that. So that he, uh, so so your alter ego is definitely a huge part of the writing process. Yes, kind of, like you know, the minute I step in that studio, mm-hmm. it's like any negativity, any insecurity that Princeton has, it's gone. And then, yeah. and then I'll like record a good ballad, and then I'll leave. I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go home. Like <laughs> switch it up. Like it's just yeah, an alter ego. I love it. And you've been doing some acting too, right? Yeah, so, I yeah. just uh, my first audition. I never really acted growing up, but during that like year hiatus, I was like, you know, I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. And I went to my first audition for a movie called Pursued, and I freaking got in it. And the girl is in it, um, 16 Candles. 
Oh. Molly Ringwald. Yes. Molly Ringwald. She's in it. And I didn't even know until Great I went movie. to the premiere. Have you seen it? <laughs> yes. Really good. When I went to the, because I was, uh, Courtney and I went and did my scenes and then I went to the screening and she was there. And I was like, what is, and she's in the movie. And I was like, You're oh, like, this is pretty, it's kind of lit. Yeah. So it's called Pursuit. It's coming out later this year. It's a so. thriller, right? Well, if it's Molly it's Ringwald, now I have to go see it. Yes. I saw Sixteen Candles in the movie theater. It's good. It's it's like a thriller. <gasps> I think it's gonna be a little different than Sixteen Candles. No, yeah. I have a feeling. <laughs> no, bro. It's a good movie though. It was really good. It's awesome. It was fun. I love yeah. that. That's so great. So uh, what else is yeah. happening in in, yeah. in your world? I'm getting ready for tour. Okay. When yeah. does that start? I starts in a couple of weeks. I just started tour rehearsal, which is crazy because before I do like eight hours of rehearsal, but before that I do um I get on the soul cycle bike and like mm. do my Ooh. vocal exercises and sing all the songs, which is the hardest thing. Mm. To We're gonna do. have a conversation about that after we get off the air. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard, and like, you know, I, it's starting to hit me like, dang, I'm really solo. Like when you're in a group, mm-hmm. you can kind of look to someone and. If you yeah. forget something, you kind of know. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Now it's just me and my dancers, and yeah. I think I think I'm gonna have an all girl band too. Nice. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, I feel like no one's Can doing a do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I Go love ahead. that. Yeah. You play bass. What do you do? Um, I don't play bass. Okay. <laughs> but I'll <laughs> join. We'll I'll, find you know, I'll, I'll She'll be, play tambourine I'll play in the yellow. <laughs> the triangle. Tri- oh, triangle. So, the triangle. So, so I'm gonna segue a little bit. I, yeah. you know, on the show we talk a lot about mental health, spiritual yes. health, physical mm-hmm. health, mm-hmm. and how that relates to the voice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, you've already had such a great career, and what has kept you grounded? What keeps you in particular grounded? I think uh, first my family. Mm-hmm. I have a really traditional like Mexican Hispanic family that when I go home they don't really care about the hoopla. Right. They just want me to be me. Princeton, you're not that important. Oh the, yeah, they're just like, what are you? <laughs> Leave Papi Chulo they at the yeah, door. Yeah, they're like Papi Chulo. All right, Princeton, I'm not even here. Like, get right. out of there. I, I have a great family and just like I have a great. I have, I have the same exact mm-hmm. team that I've had. I've, the, my choreographer Dave Scott has been is the one that. Uh, put me in the audition when I was like nine, 10 years old. He's still mm-hmm. my choreographer as a manager. I, I have the same mm-hmm. team. So when people around you don't really switch up, mm-hmm. you can't really switch up on yourself. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. this industry is crazy. Yeah. I call it the noise. The noise can like really affect But how do you keep spirit? the noise That's out? True. More yeah, more speaking to that, I mean, your family's yeah. important, but how, yeah. how do you keep the noise out? Everybody's mm-hmm. a little bit different. Some people yeah. meditate, mm-hmm. some people have. Yes, medit- I meditated last mm-hmm. night. Okay, good. I have like, my awesome. chakra rocks, my special ones that I travel with. And I try to stay off social media mm-hmm. because of that mm-hmm. can, can really get you jaded. Yeah. So stay off social media and like, I don't really, I don't really have any friends in the industry. Like I have people mm-hmm. that I know, but for the most part, like that's like the biggest argument with my team is like I get invited to events and I'm like, oh, I'll go next week. Go next yeah. week. I just don't really go out like that. Yeah. I kind of just, and I'm a tour. I'm big on, on uh, zodiac signs. Yes. And cancer. I'm a Taurus. You're a Cancer. So I like stay at home too. Emotional. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you're, uh, let me guess, let me guess. You are a cow. You're good. Oh my oh my dun, 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 dun. I just stare at my team for that. Yeah. Oh my God. Usually I'm the weird, intuitive clairvoyant <laughs> in the room, but that was impressive. How would you know I was a cap? Well, because my cousin, like my god sister, Belen, she's a Capricorn. You guys he looked are, me up on Facebook. No. Right. <laughs> I have it right here on my phone. She's no, a Capricorn. You guys real. are very like hardworking. You guys go for it. Yeah, straightforward. Straightforward. What you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. So yeah. Great. But we're compatible signs. Like Capricorns yes. always get along. We get along really well. Yeah. yeah. You and me. See. This is going to work. And cancers. Cancers are cool too. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll, I'll sit here and be a crab. I'm going to use that. I'm going to say emotional. <laughs> You're a crab. Princeton called you emotional. <laughs> a little emotional, yeah. But it's all good. Passionate. <laughs> passionate. passionate. Passionate is the word. I'm a very passionate, passionate person. And emotional. Um, yeah. What advice would you give fans uh, who are struggling to find their voice in the world? I just say go for it. I feel like don't think, mm-hmm. like honestly, don't don't even think. A lot of the things that I've accomplished in my life, I've I kind of did it and went went with my heart, and now with my mind, it kind it turned out very well. So like even the audition for Minus Behavior, I just went out on faith. Like I could have really left. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have headshots. Everyone else was like professional and I'd done it. And I was just like, you know what? I, I, let's just see. And I was the first one in. So just like go out on faith mm-hmm. and just be very disciplined. 
like very disciplined, like with everything. I love that because yeah. we we talked about that with Dana last mm-hmm. time. You know, yeah. this business is not easy, not and being disciplined, people think it's so glamorous, and it's just it's it's yeah. not. It's a lot of hard work. It's very. It's hard a work. lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Yeah. So we love the message that you're tapped in, tuned into yourself. Yeah, it's like staying grounded and finding those places. Yeah, it's like still down. connect you have with to just fans, stay, but be connected with your fans. My mm-hmm. fans never switched up. It's mm-hmm. just it's just funny now that. Like, I did the mean greet. Like, before when we were in MB, like, when we would say we have a mean greet, a lot of fans would be like, I'm going to skip school to come to the mean greet. Now it's like, I'm going to find someone to cover my shift. I'm coming to, like, the shift has happened. So we've grown up together. And yeah. we kind of stayed connected. So Yeah. That's so amazing. before we go, I yeah. have to know, because I know you've got so many inspirations from, from, from music. Yeah. Who, for your next record, Dream Collaboration. That's just one. Usher is like my dream. Dream. He's amazing. Usher, can you hear can us? Can you hear us, Usher? Usher? Can you hear us? Please. I met him twice in the group. and if, That's the only guy I got started. I met him over. at my kid's basketball camp. I sat right next to him. Um, Where's that at? Yeah. I don't <laughs> think kidding. I'm allowed to say. Anyway, we had a Just nice kidding. chat. That was it. Oh, Usher. Usher and like, who else? <laughs> he probably wouldn't remember, but. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully he does. Uh, oh, I like Lizzo. Do you guys know who Lizzo yes, is? Yes, yes. She's sick. Mm-hmm. She's yeah, coming up right now. Got, so Lizzo and Usher I like too. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. So for our listeners, mm-hmm. they can find you on Instagram. Yeah. At? Everywhere, Princeton Perez. Everywhere. The website, Twitter. Okay. Instagram, YouTube. YouTube, Princeton Perez. Brilliant. Okay, got it. Great. Yeah. Well, um, everyone go take a listen to Perfect World and the rest of the EP. Yeah. And yes. thanks to yeah. sa- thanks to all our listeners for listening yes. to Lip Roll yes. and yes, this yes, episode yes. with Princeton Perez. We're so happy to have you today. Thank so you. good. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Get us over 5K. Yes, yes. Over 5K. Way over 5K. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, guys. Princeton, it was great having you you today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.